Hi everybody, um, another small video to help you understand what we do in order to have the kids feel more confident and comfortable with learning to read. Uh, in the Hebrew language we have many different vowels and it becomes a little bit overwhelming for most of the kids uh, when we start learning them as we go along the year we add more vowels and they start to getting confused with the way each one uh, looks and what sound does it make. Now, vowels are very important to know how they look and what sound they make, not only for the reading, but also when it comes the time that they do their own writing, because when they need to sound out a word and write it independently, they should know what comes under the vowel. So for example, if they use a kamatz instead of a patach, when they write a word, that's not a mistake, that's fine. We do not expect them to know if it's a kamatz or a patach, but we do expect them to make one of those when they hear the sound sha or ah, and not give me this. So in order for, to help them memorize how the vowel looks and how it sounds, we created hand motions for each one of the vowels. Now it might look a little bit like this and this, and this, when they read, a little bit funny, I would say, um, because each vowel has its own hound motion that helps the child remember how it sounds. And they need it many times when they read in order to remember how to read correctly. However, no worries, uh, very quickly, most of them will drop it and will not use it um, when they read. So I want to share with you the hand motions. And anytime you forget uh, you need, and you need to help your child or your child forget what the hand motion was, you can go to this video and remember. So this is a kamatz and the kamatz we learn and use just the way that, that we use in Israel. I know some people use it differently in their houses, but again, in school, we will learn this as a, it kamatz. And we had a doctor coming into our class and take, telling all the kids to open a big mouth and saying, Ah, uh, with a stick. So every time there's a shape of a stick inside a vowel, which comes in the kamatz, in the patach, and in the chataf patach, the kids will have to open their mouth, ah. So for the kamatz, they will go, ah. For the patach, they will go, ah. And for the patach, chataf patach, they will go, ah, with two taps on their laps. Again, when it comes to writing, as long as they put one of these under something that has a a, ba, ga sound, we're good. The next one is shva, and I'm gonna use it for the letter shin because this is when we are introducing it, and it will be this sound, this sign, sh, because shin, when we want some quiet, will make a sh, and if it's bet, it will be b, and if it's gimel, it will be a g. It's, it sounds like more like a stop sign, so we go like this to the kids, and that's how they remember that this is the way it looks. It also looks and sounds actually like, a le like the letter without any nekudot. I know the shva has different forms uh, when it comes to reading, different rules uh, for shva na and shva nach. For now, the kids learn it as shva nach. As we go al along the year, they will learn the different rules for this shva. After that, I think in the letter Gimel, we will learn the Chirik and the Chirik Malay. And the hand motion for Chirik and Chirik Malay both will be poking their chin, E, B, G, etc. Poking the chin will be the Chirik. After the Chirik comes the Cholam and the Cholam sorry, and the Cholam If you look closely, it looks like a basketball. So the children have a basketball and a basketball with a hoop. The cholam is just a ball and we throw it up. So it will be O going up and Bo going up. The same will be with the cholam ele, just the cholam ele comes with the hoop itself. So it will be Go and Do and again, etc. with all the letter. The next two that will come are Tzere and Tzegol. In regards to Tzere, I know a lot of you go for Tzere A. Again, we're going to use the tzere in class just like we use it in Israel, and the tzere and tzegol will make the same, same sound, e. 
The only time that tzere will have a different sound is when it has a yud after it, like a fo, a ze, etc. Otherwise, it will be an e. And tzere and tzigol are like smileys. So the tzere will have two fingers to the chin, and the tzigol will have the third one. When we learn about it in class, the kids get stickers with like a shape of a smiley, and they go like this, and they go like this. It might be a little bit painful when you have to do it every day with the kids, but just a joke. Anyway, so that's for the tzere and tzigol. The last one will be kibbutz and shuruk. Now, there's a story to come with kibbutz and shuruk that I will share with the kids when we learn about two brothers who went outside to play. The kibbutz is a little bit mischief, and mommy told them, please, to be very careful when they go down the stairs because you should really walk very slowly and not run. But kibbutz was not such a good listener, and he rushed out, and he ran down the stairs, and he goes, ooh, because falling down the stairs can be painful. And once they were outside and playing in a playground with a ball, Kubutz wasn't so respectful to his brother. And he threw the ball just to the belly of his brother, Shuruk, and the Shuruk went, ooh, and boo. Kubutz and Shuruk should have a fist to the belly. Of course, with no punching, just putting the fist on the belly. So, uh, again, it looks like a little bit of exercise. It looks a little bit out of the box when the kids read in class or at home, but I see that this is one of the most helpful tools for the kids to make the reading more comfortable, more fluent, and definitely when it comes to writing, more helpful and writing correctly. Hope that was helpful for you as well. Thank you.